What's going on? I know you can hear me. Open the door. Captain's locked down. Everything all right? Oh, yes, sir. Everything's fine. Please return to your seat. Captain. Just returning from the washroom. Copilot's not responding. You tried to come? He overrode it. Listen, I'm a professional negotiator. Maybe I can help. Well, you can help by returning to your seat. Sir, the captain is busy. Please take your seat. I thought cockpit doors were impossible to open from the outside. We have a code in case the pilot suffers a medical emergency. It must just be a technical issue. All right. What is going on? Co-pilot. I think he just hijacked the plane. We need the captain on our side. I agree, but he's definitely the take charge type. Maybe he'll listen to a woman. They rarely do. Right. Captain, I'm sorry. What's, what's going on? Oh, just some turbulence up ahead. The copilot's diverting, that's all. Perhaps the passengers should be reassured. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Captain Trombley. Due to some turbulence up ahead, we are making a slight course correction. Please, just enjoy the rest of the flight. Okay, Captain, what's really going on? Or do you always stand outside the cockpit door when there's turbulence? As Eric said, we're negotiators. What have you got to lose? The co-pilot's flying us south. Is he talking? Maybe the man? No, nothing but silence so far. As long as the Wi-Fi is up, I can make calls. So I'm going to contact Flight Center to find out if they have any idea why my co-pilot isn't responding. Look, his name is Bruno Lesio. Why would a co-pilot divert his own plane? Terrorism? Or suicide. Why not just crash the plane? Oh, well, jumpers often stand on the ledge for hours. I mean, the fact that he's not sure is to our advantage. Calls are. I'm going to talk to Bruno. Okay. Cynthia. Hey. Hey, Zara. We have a situation here. Bruno, my name is Eric Bowman. I'm a professional negotiator. Now, the first rule of negotiation is find out what the person needs and then find a way to give it to them. So, how can I help? You know, if you don't want to talk to me, is there anyone out here that you would like to talk to? Can I hear your voice? Just to know that you're okay. Please? We need to find out everything we can about the co-pilot, Bruno Messio. Okay, I'm on it. Hey, right, and I'll contact the FAA. Let us know if you guys need anything else. How about some parachutes? You know, if you don't want to talk through the door, Bruno, let me in. And if you change your mind and want me to leave, I will go. Progress? No. Becky, do you know him? Not really. We've crewed a couple of short hauls together. He's serious. Quiet. Depressed. You want some food or a drink? You know, if you don't want to answer my questions, maybe you'd like to ask me something? Yes. Go ahead. Do you believe in hell? Becky. Becky. Okay, hey, 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 listen to me. Listen to me. I need, I need to get together, okay? Yeah? Uh, it sounds like you're a moral person. That's, uh, that's great to hear. Would you like to talk to a uh, religious or spiritual leader? Denver. Why Denver? He says we're going to Denver. How long will that take? 90 minutes. Captain, what are you doing? Talking to Flight Center. We're finding a way in there. Is that possible? Well, we're going to make it possible. Go ahead. The FAA is going to instruct the captain to give you and Eric his full cooperation, but it's at his discretion. He's hardly discreet. Any idea why Denver? FAA, FBI, RCMP, no one has a clue. There's nothing that connects the co-pilot to Denver. He's never flown there, and there's nothing going on there. I'm looking at the guy's social media page. He has friends, family. Bruno Lessio seems like a pretty happy guy. Bought an apartment in Montreal six months ago. Promising career. Even made plans this weekend. Yeah, that doesn't sound suicidal. What is it, then? I don't know. We're going to go check out Bruno's apartment. Police are on their way there now. We'll be in touch. Bruno, this is Captain Trombley. If you do not open this door, I am going to take a crash axe and pry open a panel until I get to the avionics bay. Then I am going to start pulling out hydraulic circuit boards until you can no longer fly the plane. Do you want to... Threats will not persuade him, sir. 
Well, your talk isn't exactly persuading him either, is it? Maybe Brina will land the plane in Denver. No, pilot hijackings generally mean pilot suicides. If he attempts to fly us over downtown Denver, the Air Force is going to knock us out of the sky. Do you get that? If you rip out the electronics, then who's going to fly the plane in? I will know which circuits work and which won't. I will have ground operation support. He won't. But you have to get inside. Yes. What about autopilot? Autopilot does not land a plane like this. Listen, if we do not open that door and get inside, we die. Captain, can you tell us what's happening, please? Yeah, of, of course I can. I'm so sorry. Yo, guys, guys. Um, did you hear what's going on up there? I heard someone said there's a hijacking. No way. That's insane. Do you guys be willing to give me a hand? I'm their coach. What's going on? Well, we have a situation. Oh, my God, I'm Chris. Bruno, open the cockpit door or the captain's going to do something rational. I can come in and broker an arrangement between the two of you. But if the problem is, we can solve it. Okay. Captain Trombley can come in. But no one else. Eric? Listen, he's willing to let you back in, but everybody else has to stand back, okay? Those are his terms. Okay. Okay. I can take this. Why is he letting me back in? Maybe he changed his mind. Could it be a trick? Maybe, but Captain, no pressure on him, okay? Don't threaten. Just let him talk and, and listen. If you're calm, he's calm, right? Guys, no, stop. The door's impenetrable. You're only going to provoke it. Get off. Get back. Get off. Get back. Professional negotiators. The man in the cockpit can still land the plane, and he will. We just need to persuade him. But the key here is not to panic. Outside this plane, there are thousands of people figuring out what to do, so we're not alone. Good speech. Hmm. I suppose I believed it. Now what? I saw Bruno earlier in the boarding area. What was his mood? Good. I spoke to him. He was pleasant, smiling. He gave me the munchers, but I sensed only fear and resignation from the cockpit. Well, what changed? Exactly. Clear to enter. Police! Police! Okay, thank you. Eric, I'm glad you called. I just had two quick minutes with Montreal police. Bruno has no criminal history, and his doctor says there's no indication of drug abuse. He hasn't been diagnosed with a mental illness. He isn't taking antidepressants. I saw Bruno before we boarded. He took a call. Maybe he got bad news. Can you check his income? We already did. His last call was from his ex, Fiona Stemkowska. She lives across the street. That's how they met. Well, I want to talk to her. She's on her way. In fact, here she is right now. Eric, we'll call you right back. Hi. Hi. Bruno, it's Eric Beaumont again. We met earlier. You gave me the munchers, remember? You got what you wanted, Bruno. Captain Tremblay is incapacitated. You are in full control. Whatever you think is in Denver, maybe I can help you find it. No one can help me. Why? Come on, what's gonna happen if you tell me? Once we get to Denver and you found what you're looking for, will you be happy? I'll never be happy. But at least it will stop. What well, will stop, Bruno? Oliver. So I'm with Fiona Stimkowska. 
I've briefed her on the situation. She says she broke up with Bruno three weeks ago. Why'd you break up with him, Sheila? Uh, I, I'm a single mom. Ethan is my life. I, I could just tell Bruno would never commit. Was the breakup bitter? No. If anything, he was relieved. And the call today? Friendly. Uh, I, I left some things at his place, and I wanted to know when I could pick them up. Okay, here's the point. Fiona said Bruno would wake up screaming. Shaking, sweating. I tried to talk to him about it, but he clams up. Classic post-traumatic stress syndrome. Do you know why he'd have PTSS? No. We can't figure it out. Okay. Fiona, do you think if you talk to Bruno, you could persuade him to land the plane? I could give it a try. So the best way to reach Bruno is to show him that you care. So try to find a way to express it. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Bruno, I have someone who wants to talk to you. Bruno? Fiona? I don't know what's going on. You're, you're scaring a lot of people. It's not like you. Open the door. Land the plane. You won't be alone. You have me and Ethan. I want to be alone. No, Bruno. I care about you, Fee. I do. I love you. And I... I love Ethan, too. But you're better off without me. So is the world. Bruno! <laughs> Bruno, please! You were in a good mood earlier, Bruno. What happened? Did you talk to someone? Did you see something? Is there any list of the passengers we can access? On the airline's intranet. We can see everything the flight center sees. Why? My colleagues on the ground. I wanted to have full access. It's possible Bruno recognized one of the passengers in the waiting area when he boarded. Maybe that's what triggered him. Here. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Okay, Becky, I'm in. Thanks. What are you doing? Flight manifest. Seeing who's on board. Look, Bruno's passport from when he was a kid. But the name? Reads Bruno Venturi, not Bruno Lesio. He changed his name. Looks like it. <laughs> Just don't open the door. Oh God, we're gonna die. No, we're not. Okay, my dad can talk anyone into anything. We shouldn't be here, man. We should be with the rest of the team. None of this would be happening. Well, but we're not, are we? I'm sorry, guys. It's not your fault, man. Don't worry about it. Yeah, man. Don't worry about it. What are you guys talking about? Is it about the roof party? What roof party? It's just nobody's fault, we're a team. We stick together. Sit down. Bruno Venturi, first round soccer draft pick and set to be a star. But then his stats tumbled. Sports articles trashed him. Soccer social media started to harass him. Is that why he changed his name and got out of the game? Wait a second, Gordon McDougall. Who's Gordon McDougall? It can't be a coincidence. What? what? Gordon McDougall has one of the best win-loss records of any Canadian soccer coach in history. He's on the flight with three of his players. And he was Bruno's old coach. I got it. What's going on? The co-pilot is Bruno Venturi. He's flying the plane? Bruno? Yes. You didn't recognize him? N no, I haven't seen him in a dozen years. He was like 16 last time I saw him. And you cut him? Yeah. But I fought to keep him. He knows that. Bruno being cut from the team and now seeing the uniforms. Let me talk to him. Look, despite how it ended, Bruno and I, we share an unbreakable bond. I wasn't just his coach, I was his mentor, his, his teacher. I can get that door open a lot faster than that negotiator up there, that's for sure. Why'd you change your name, Bruno? I didn't. There's a passport in your apartment. And he never even told Fiona you played soccer. She had no idea. I never played soccer. Bruno, I'll be right back. I'm not going anywhere. This coach wants to speak with him. I agree, but we're running out of time and strategies. All right. Bruno is denying he ever even played soccer. You can't say anything that might provoke his anger. No problem. I know what to say. Okay, what, what's that? Just watch me. Listen, I hear anything I don't like. I'm going to end the conversation. So you know. Bruno. Hi, it's Coach McDougal. <laughs> I miss you, buddy. Hey, you know, I still remember that game against Costa Rica. You got the rebound off the crossbar, headed into the corner, man. That was a beautiful finish. Listen, Bruno, I understand what it must be like seeing those guys get on the plane, but you gotta understand, not everybody can...
can't succeed in the game, and, and that's okay. You're a pilot. The point is to succeed at life, and clearly, Bruno, you've done that. Now land the plane, and then we'll talk. Whatever you need, man. You... Look out the window. No, they're here to help us. There's a second fighter on the starboard side. You're gonna provoke him. This is NORAD defense systems. Please respond with your status, or we will be forced to take defensive actions. Is he jumping with you? If he doesn't switch it off, we won't have enough fuel to land the plane anywhere. We can't negotiate under the barrel of a gun. You gotta get those fighter jets away from us. You cannot allow your plane to be turned into a weapon. We're still 30 minutes from Denver. Sorry, these orders come straight from the top. With all due respect, Colonel, you're full of crap. The White House wouldn't order us you down until the last second. Your orders are to tag and tail, but you're following too close. You're gonna provoke the co-pilot into crashing. How's that gonna affect your career, Colonel? I'll pull him back three miles. It's the best I can do. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well played. Yeah. Cover your butt always works in the military. Even if we get close to downtown, they're going to execute the shoot order. We have to get Bruno heading away from Denver. He doesn't turn off that fuel dump. That won't matter. Take a look, Bruno. The F-16s are backing off. Can we talk now? Come on, Bruno. I'm doing everything I can. You gotta, you gotta meet me halfway. Hey, guys. Um, Chris and the boys have been acting kind of weird. I think there's something going on. What do you mean? Are we on comms? Loud and clear. We need to talk. Privately. Can we talk? Yes. Please, have a seat. <clears throat> hey. So my name's Eric. Okay. Chris, you have to tell me what really happened last night. It might be the difference between this plane landing or crashing. Evie, can you give us five? Yeah. This is just like Bruno's behavior back in the day. He was, he was always very impulsive. You seemed very moved when you were talking to him. Of course I was moved. I love these guys. Now I know that I can get him to open that door. You've got to give me another chance. Okay, Cynthia, I think I got what you're looking for. A series of legal settlements and NDAs all associated with the team, and one name keeps reappearing. Coach Gord McDougall. Maybe. But first, can you tell me about the non-disclosure agreements? I'm sorry. I don't know what you're talking about. NDA dated July 12th, 2008. A second one dated May 29th, 2010. May 29th, 2010. July 12th, 2008. What's going on, coach? What did you do? Nothing. Then what's in those agreements? What can't you talk about? Physical abuse? Verbal abuse? Steroids? Okay, look. These are kids. Don't we have to protect their privacy? I was drinking. Last night. It wasn't because we won. Coach, he, uh, he called me into his hotel room, like, like he always does. You really want to hear this? Yeah, I need to, I need to know the truth. I couldn't take it anymore. I went out on my balcony and I, I thought about jumping. But then Liam and Sean came and... They, they stopped you. If I say anything, no one will believe me. If they say anything, we'll get kicked off the team. When you've got a record like coaches, no one wants to hear about that stuff. You weren't just Bruno's coach, were you? You did other things with him. So when he tried nerve. to speak, you got rid of him. You were way off base. Let me talk. He is dumping fuel. We don't land unless you confess. Then maybe, maybe... We all live. I'll be at the front waiting. Think. Okay, I've been analyzing Bruno's flight path with the guy at the FAA. He isn't headed for downtown Denver. His vector takes him straight towards Dunvegan College, 30 miles southwest of the city. That's the Nobilio scandal. Remind me? Dunvegan was the site of a major football sex abuse scandal. Lance Nobilio was the head coach who covered it up. That's why Bruno's crashing a plane. He's making a statement. But there's a problem, Eric. If he's dumping fuel, the plane's not going to make it. Bruno. Dumbagan College, right? Small problem. Check your fuel.
fuel gauge. There's not enough fuel, is there? It's a bold statement, Bruno. I understand it. And what's more, I want to help. So let me. There is a young man here. His name is Chris. He's 17. He wants to talk. Hold down the button. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Chris. Uh, I'm a striker with Montreal. E Eric says he used to play for us. Keep going. Look, the coach. Same thing happened to me that happened to you. For me, it started three weeks in. I, I don't know why he picked me, but... But he did. Sorry, Chris. You can save Chris's future and bring Coach McDougal to just first you have to turn off the fuel dump. Let's talk about finding a wrong way. Sure. <laughs> okay. Nope. There's no way you're talking. I know him. I know how to talk to him. No, he's agreed to land the plane. Come on, Bruno. You know how much you meant to me. I should remember how connected we were, how many great times we had together. Okay, coach. <laughs> Open that. Get off me! Get off me! Get off me! You're finished. All of you. You never play soccer again. Bruno, it's over. Chris has come forward. His teammates have taken the coach away. There's no reason to forget. It doesn't matter! I'm asking the coach won't make a difference. It's everywhere. Chris is part of the problem. I am part of the problem. It needs to stop now. Danger. 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 <laughs> He's going to crash into the Rockies. Danger. 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 It's happening. Can't just crunch the oxygen. I'm not sure who we have. Twelve minutes before we run out. And if he doesn't repressurize the cabin, what happens? We're dead. Oh, I got it. Get yours. Did you call your mom? I couldn't get through. Then we went hiking once near Oka. You disappeared. You were missing for like 45 minutes. And the park rangers found you. You'd already gathered berries to eat. You found this little shelter under a fallen tree, and you were singing. To keep the witches away. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I was in awe. I still am. We tried everything we could. Nothing worked. We're gonna run out of oxygen soon. Okay, you guys hang in there. This is not over. Can you be more specific? Because that might help. Dad? No. Why did he push me away? I thought if I kept my distance, it would keep you safe. It felt like you abandoned me. Oh. I'm so sorry, sweetie. I wish I could have been a better dad. You were a better dad. This will give you minutes more than the rest of us. You're our only chance. Try again. Please. I'm staying with you till the end, okay? You can't protect me from everything. Go do your job. I love you so much, Evie. You are the most important thing. Oh, my God.
Michael. Eric. Yeah. Eric, thank you for everything. Bye. It ain't over yet. You mean have around. Neither one of us wants to die alone. I had to open the door. the oxygen. So the passengers fell asleep peacefully. You get that out of compassion. You and the coach are not the same. I never will be, okay? You don't know who I am. Maybe not. But Fiona does know. Go ahead, Fiona. Bruno! Babe? Fiona. I heard everything. Why didn't you tell me? Oh. I'll be there for you. We will be there for you. This won't keep us away from you. Bruno! She heard the truth and she didn't push you away. You tell the world and they will listen. Nobody listened 12 years ago. Just Coach McDougal used his power to shut you up. Silence was his weapon of choice. But there is nothing more silent than smoldering wreckage and dead bodies on the summit of a mountain. If you crash his plane, Coach wins. You understand that? The only way to stop the cycle is to speak up. Bruno! Bruno, please! And the silence. Danger. Pull up. Danger. Pull up.
Air traffic control, this is contact flight 617 requesting emergency landing. We need emergency vehicles on the ground. And oxygen, if you don't mind. Coach is being held by the FBI. What about Bruno? I called a criminal lawyer I know in Denver, and he's agreed to represent Bruno pro bono. So his story will be heard. That's great news. Amazing. Bruno's going to need some counseling. Well, we'll see what we can do about that. Okay. Let's call it a day. Okay. Later. Bye. Thank you. You saved us all. She's exaggerating. <laughs> Evie, I don't know what you remember from the plane, but these past few months I've been keeping you at a distance because I thought it would be... It's okay. Yeah. I won't let anyone get between us anymore. From now on. Together. Okay? Mm-hmm. Cool. I'll still never fly with you again, though. Your mother will see to that. Maybe I should. Yeah, go. And say thanks. You okay? Good. We were gonna die today. And there wasn't anyone you wanted to call. That's a story for another day. <laughs>